Hi everybody, Adam Stern, CEO of Strat SFR. We're here with a great guest today. His name is Mike Donofrio. He's with Engineer Tax Services to talk about a subject that a lot of people that are SFR portfolio owners or build for rent community owners either know about and don't know enough about or just don't know about to begin with. Engineer Tax Services does cost segregation for real estate. Mike Donofrio, appreciate you being with us. Thanks, Adam. Great to, uh, great, great to speak with you this morning. Quick question about yourself. How does a, a person get from whatever you're doing before to becoming an expert in cost segregation? Great question, and, and one that I get often. My background's more in uh, private equity, mergers and acquisitions, project finance. And my job back in the day was to look at a, an acquisition or a development and to find any of the extra juice any of the uh, specialty tax credits, any of the incentives, any things that came out of you know, an acquisition strategy, anything special where we could help boost the overall return on investment and be as comprehensive as possible with our project. And okay. you know, that led me down the road uh, originally with renewable energy and biofuels. And there was always some sort of special tax credit, tax incentive you know, on that project or on that piece of real estate. And then it, we realized, and in working with ETS, engineered tax services now for geez, almost 15 plus years, that applies to real estate, you know, and all different types of real estate, even your type of real estate with SFR. So right. That's kind of how I got here. So you were in a business where you did projects that had tax incentives, or you had to know about ways to manage taxes or even reduce taxes. And you kind of took that knowledge and you joined engineer tax services. And now you're kind of correlating that knowledge in how to do this thing called cost segregation. And you're relating it to other types of real estate. So the kind of real estate that you were doing or the kind of projects you were doing weren't real estate based at the time. And you learn how to do cost segregation on those projects and you're just relating it to real estate or is it always like a real estate based thing, cost segregation? Great question. This is something that's always been in the tax code. Uh, this is something that Julio Gonzalez, the original founder of ETS, Engineered Tax Services in Palm Beach, Florida, we had been doing you know, for the top CPA firms and investment groups behind the scenes for years. But okay. with the emergence of specialty uh, incentives in, in the tax code you know, over the last five, 10 years, th this applies not just to the Wall Street related strategies, it's the Main Street investors, owners and operators that can take advantage of these same you know, type of uh, tax incentives and depreciation and, and tax credits. It's not it's, just the original big manufacturing companies and, and big investment platform type real estate plays. This applies to all retail. It applies to all residential, multifamily, single family and investment properties as well. It's so funny, like in the SFR industry, the way it's all unfolded is the big institutions learn how to do something, create technology and know how around it. And eventually firms come about to take that institutional knowledge and kind of relate it to the smaller and smaller investor. It sounds kind of like the same path that you took to get from where you were offering these services out to even medium sized and smaller investors, uh, which is interesting. It kind of follows along the same path as uh, what most technology and what most knowledge has uh, done in the institutional SFR space, making its way down to medium sized investors and eventually smaller investors. At a high level, exactly. you know, talking about a guy that doesn't know anything from my perspective about cost segregation, in a nutshell, could you explain cost segregation, what it is and how investors, especially in the SFR space, can apply to their business? Cost segregation or component depreciation or, you know, separating a building into its different pieces, parts for depreciation purposes, again, as, as, as a strategy that's been around for 20 plus years. All we're doing as an engineering and specialty tax firm, very similar to an appraisal, is separating out the pieces of parts of that building so that they can, can be componentized and depreciated separately. Rather than lumping a building together, uh, you, know, you got the building, you got the land, the land you can't depreciate, but a building uh, can be depreciated over 27 and a half years if it's residential or 39 years if it's commercial. But if you apply that cost segregation methodology and you do the study to identify the pieces parts, there's big sections of a building inside called the five year uh, asset classifications that can be depreciated over five years and 15 year improvements outside the building. That's all the build out inside the building, the flooring, the cabinets, the countertops, the specialty lighting and electrical and outside the building, you know, the landscaping, the irrigation, the parking areas. Those are all improvements to the site, improvements to the inside of that building, that if you identify them and, and break them out separately, the IRS allows for a componentized depreciation of those assets. 
And right now, with, with 100% bonus depreciation um, that came in in 2016 and 17 with the Trump Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, there's 100% bonus depreciation, meaning 100% of those asset types that I just mentioned, we can write off immediately year one. So you take a, a portfolio owner, let's say, like the Stratus typical client that owns 50 properties. You own a bunch of single family rental properties. You know, each single family property has uh, land, a foundation, walls, a roof. They've got HVACs. They've got different components in terms of lighting, electrical, all the different components of the house. And generally a house, you said, can be depreciated over 27 and a half years. So basically what you do is you take all the different components and you accelerate those different components on a shorter depreciation schedule so that the owner can actually see the tax benefits sooner rather than over that entire 27 and a half years. Do I have that right? You do. I mean, if you don't do a cost segregation study, it's okay. But again, then you take that building and you take the cost of it, whether it's a hundred thousand or a million plus doesn't make a difference. Divide that by 27 and a half years. That's the amount of depreciation that you get. That's what's okay. called straight line depreciation. You do right. the cost seg study. On average, we're going to carve out and identify 25 to 35 percent of that building. You know, that's 250 to 350 thousand per million of, of your portfolio that we right. can write off year one. So do the math on that. Okay. That's that's very powerful uh, immediate write offs in, with the current tax code. If you have a building, if you have especially multiple buildings, you accelerate your depreciation, but that means you're basically using the tax break that you would get over that period of time, that 27 and a half years, and just getting it sooner. And eventually it'll be entirely depreciated, at which point you could either sell the real estate or somehow transfer it, in which case, does that depreciation schedule reset and that you can actually do the process all over again? Correct. Anytime there's a new buyer or builder of a property, when a new property goes into service, that depreciation resets. If I bought a property from you, my depreciation schedule starts over again and my depreciation or bonus opportunities starts over. So yes, Got you it. can do that cost sake study, you know, you know, rat, again, rather than spreading it out over 20 or 30 years, many of your clients and investors aren't going to hold those properties for 20 or 30 years. Maybe it's right. a five year right. hold, maybe it's a 10 year hold, but you know, like an annuity, you want those write offs spread out or do you want them immediately so you can use the tax savings and the cash savings to maybe invest in another property. Yeah, it's like a, a lot of strategy clients on the sell side and the buy side are funds that have a very specific lifespan to an investment portfolio. It might be three to five years, might be five to seven years, might be five to 10 years or more. If they didn't do a cost seg study and they just straight line depreciated it and they, let's say, had a, a strategy of selling their portfolio in 10 years, they essentially left all that money on the table from 10 years all the way up to 27 and a half years on the table. They didn't, they didn't uh, benefit from it at all. So spending the money on a cost egg study, the idea would be to recoup the cost of the cost egg study by taking that depreciation that you're not recognizing because it's beyond the lifespan of your investment and just correlating the lifespan of your investment to whatever accelerated depreciation schedule you can do. It sounds like that would be the strategy. It is. And again, the cost of things with efficiency and technology has changed. You know, originally Wall Street and big investment funds used to pay ten, twenty thousand dollars for cost segregation studies because that's what it costs for the logistics to get it done. You know, mm -hmm. now we do, you know, two, three, four hundred studies a month across the country on all different types of properties every day. And they can be a little as a few thousand dollars and the return on investment is amazing. Yeah, let's talk about the cost tax study because if you're like, if most people are like me, if you can do it and just tell like your accountant to do it, go ahead and accelerate my depreciation. It sounds like you have to actually pay for a person or a firm. Then I guess the study tells you what can be depreciated and how, and then you take that study and what show it to your accountant and have them file the correct paperwork when you do your tax returns on the business. I mean, it, there's a study and then there's the actual paperwork that has to be filed to actually get the depreciation or the all one thing. Yeah, some large CPA firms have the ability to do this internally. Most will use a specialist like our firm, like Engineered Tax Services, like an appraisal. You know, the, the, the CPAs don't always have the expertise to identify all those pieces, parts of a building. That's why they'll defer to a, an engineering firm specialist like an appraisal to, you know, to identify all those pieces, parts. So they have the detail when they're signing off on a tax return, you know, of what's in that building. You know, it's not just on the purchase. It's not just on the new construction that might go into service of that development. Mm -hmm. Let's also not forget about improvements and renovations and CapEx. I mean, 
we, we know that's a huge part of not only SFR, but all types of real estate is there's going to be a roof replacement. There's going to be new windows. There's going to be HVAC. There's going to be lighting. There's going to be holes in the, you know, in the, in the concrete that needs to be fixed. Having the detail in that report that has the cost basis of everything allows those CPAs to go in very efficiently and say, okay, we're going to remove this old HVAC system. We're going to put in the new one on the depreciation schedule. We can write off the old one. Having that detail in one report is what allows not only the, the depreciation on, on the new asset, but the removing and the and the disposition credits of the old asset. So it's it's a living document that goes along with that property, you know, to help maximize again the original purchase or the new construction or the improvements that inevitably happen along the way. Interesting. You compared it to uh, an appraisal, which an appraisal there's a physical component to it. Someone actually goes out to the property, they inspect the property, they do an appraisal. You got to get your hands around it. So if a person owns 20, 30, 50 SFRs or more, in order to do the cost egg study, actually physically has to go to the property, inspect the property from top to bottom. Does it go like a regular inspection? Does it take as long as a regular inspection? How detailed are they in actually going and, and seeing and feeling and touching these things? In your property, yeah. Again, most of our most of our cost seg studies are very similar to appraisals. I always mm -hmm. reference them because the scope of work is the same, except we're not looking for valuation purposes. We're looking for tax and accounting and all those pieces, parts of that that building. So most of the time, as a licensed professional engineering firm, yes, we're going to those properties. We're, we're walking the site. We're taking the pictures. We're taking videos. But in the age of technology, we do have a ways uh, for certain types of properties and certain types of portfolios to keep those costs down. You know, we can do virtual uh, site visits. We have technology that we can deploy to keep those costs down and be most efficient on the front end, but also on the back end, we and the clients and the CPAs, they wanna have that backup documentation and the support. So if the IRS were to ask, you know, how did you do this study? What was it based on? You know, what did you see? We, we have all that detail in one report but again, that's where technology comes in also, just, just like our live you know, webcast right now, that we're able to capture that. And that client can use that information for other things, for insurance, for property tax appeals, you know, for other you know, risk mitigation strategies that they need to deploy in their properties to be able to see it and touch it and feel it sometimes without actually being there. But most that's of the time we're going to visit those properties. It's interesting. It brings up two questions. For owners that are watching this that already started depreciating properties, is it ever too late to start cost segregating? In other words, have you, if you depreciated something over the last 10 years, can you do a cost seg study now and have the additional 17 and a half years of depreciation like sped up? Or is it just too late if you start depreciating a property past a certain point? I'm glad you brought that up. And the reason I'm smiling is that's not just a softball question I asked you to ask. No, the it's IRS, all me. <laughs> the, the IRS allows and actually prefers if you haven't done a cost segregation study, you can do them right now, even retroactively on properties that you've owned one to 10 plus years ago. We can do that study. We can go back and look at the property. We can take the retroactive adjustment. You know, let's say it was a 2015 purchase. We can identify all the depreciation, what could have been taken in 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. It goes on your 2021 tax return without doing amended tax returns. It's a process and a form called the 3115. It's an automatic change of accounting basically showing the IRS. And this is what our documentation and support shows. What assets are there? What has changed? If it's improvements, you get that tax benefit right into the current tax year. Those retroactive studies is something that we do all the time because every day clients are finding out about you know cost segregation and, and what they could have done. So it's interesting. So you have a portfolio, let's say a lot of our portfolio owners have owned this for a decade or two. You can actually go back and look at the depreciation schedule, do the cost seg study. Would all that basically wash out to you getting a bigger tax deduction in the year that you do the cost seg study to kind of catch up and have that retroactive study kind of benefit you in the current year? Or does the government just say, hey, you know, thanks for the study. Here's some money back that you paid in taxes that, that you wouldn't have paid yeah. if you had done the cost seg study. Yeah, the IRS allows us to go back, take that retroactive adjustment, the, the catch up adjustment. The CPAs, if they're listening, will know that as a 481A adjustment. That goes mm -hmm. on to that 3115 form. It goes right into the 2021 tax return. That's additional top line depreciation that flows through typically to the investor's K-1. So it will maximize it right into the current year. Any extra, let's say I, I got you know one of your owners an extra couple million dollars of depreciation, which, which isn't unheard of. If it's more than what they can use, they don't lose it. It just then rolls forward to the next year. 
as well. So okay. yeah, you're just, you're just maximizing it right now. You'll use it to write off any income, you know, depending on your tax structures, whether you're active or passive, there's, there's a lot of uh, some technicals in the background, we have to make sure we're maximizing for that client. We'll work comprehensively and complementary with the CPA of the client. We don't take the typical accounting and tax work. We're the specialist that can work with the SFR investor with their CPA to make sure they're maximizing it. And then we typically will become the specialist that they'll be turning to before they purchase the next portfolio. They'll say, hey, Mike, will you look at this portfolio or this individual asset? What's the depreciation that we can expect? You know, plus maybe some of this CapEx that we're going to be doing on this property. We can give that proactive complementary benefit analysis of what the depreciation will look like before they buy something or before they sell something. You know, maybe they're considering putting something on the market. They're going to be asking, you know, what's my gain going to be on the sale? You know, what's my tax exposure? If I do a 1031 or if I don't do a 1031, what are my options? Uh, but those are all things that we can do, you know, proactively before they buy before they build, before they sell. Let's be proactive together and I can give you all the numbers to fit into your projections. That's super interesting, Mike. I've never really looked at a case study of how much money a person could save if they do a cost seg study. You wanna give us an example of a typical cost seg study on like one single family home just to show our audience how much money you can save that much sooner using a cost seg study? Sure, I mean, here's an example on my screen that I just pulled up and we have dozens and dozens of them on our website under case studies but this is a you know typical you know single family residential property phoenix arizona this property you know was purchased in 2021 was you know five hundred and fifty nine thousand dollars without doing a cost segregation study their first year depreciation would have been about twenty thousand dollars by doing a cost segregation study we're identifying remember i mentioned the five-year asset classifications the 15-year asset classifications those are the interior improvements, the exterior improvements. That's what five-year and 15-year uh, asset classifications are. Those are those improvement categories. All of those qualify for immediate write-off. That's what 100% bonus depreciation means. Sometimes folks think that means that you can write off the whole property. That's not what it means. It means you can write off 100% of the five-year asset classes and the 15-year asset classes that we identify in this study. You know, we got $148,000 of five year. That's the interior build out of this building, the flooring, the cabinets, the countertops, et cetera. And then mm -hmm. the 15 year, that's 31,000 that can be written off immediately. Of course, there's the 27 and a half year. But this is just a great snapshot on our website. And we got a whole bunch of these that show, you know, different types of properties, different sizes, whether it's a $100,000 property or 500 or a million plus. The math is generally all the same. You know, of course, so the more expensive the property is, the better it gets. So for this, Mike, this building, if they just did a straight line 27 and a half year depreciation, they would get $2,877 on a 27 and a half year depreciation. If they did a cost seg study, and accelerated that on a 15 year, they would get a 31,952 benefit. So explain this to me, because I'm having a hard time understanding the numbers. Let's just talk round numbers. Let's talk $500,000. Let's say that this building was a $500,000 property. If we didn't do a cost segregation study, 500,000 divided by 27.5 equals $18,000 in tax deduction per year. Over 27 and a half years. Right. 500,000 divided by 27 and a half equals about $18,000 per year. That's what straight line depreciation is. If I do this cost segregation study, you know, take the same $500,000, let's say we get, you know, 30% reclassification to personal property. That 30% reclassification includes the five year and the 15 year asset types that we'll find. Mm -hmm. That means that about $150,000 write off year one. Really? Um, wow. Yeah, that, that's a big jump from the, the small number that you get steadily over 27 and a half years and you get a massive number in year one and that's what you call bonus depreciation for that segment, right? Exactly. You want that 20,000 spread out over you know 30 years or do you want 150 front loaded into year one so that you can use it as fast as possible? And again, that's just one property. Many of your clients will have a whole portfolio of properties so that's how I'm confident. You know, we're talking millions of dollars of difference right. you know, in tax benefits. Yeah, so they could almost, in a year that a client or an SFR portfolio owner might have a big tax bill, that'd be the best year to go and do a cost tax study because they can get that big deduction in year one as bonus depreciation and cover, uh, or at least try to reduce their tax burden in a year where they have a big tax bill at the end of the year. Yeah, absolutely. And right now, this 100% bonus depreciation 
which was in effect from 2016, 17 through now, it goes through the end of this year, tax laws may change. Here we are at the end of 2021. The other reason for our discussion right now, tax laws may change next year. The Biden administration has talked about taking some of these things off the table, changing this bonus depreciation format, potentially changing things like 1031 and other things. Take advantage of this while you can now before you file that 21 tax return. There's massive opportunities. Anyone that thinks that, hey, it's no big deal if I don't take it this year, maybe I'll do it next year or the year after that. Like it's money the government's offering you right now if you do this cost seg study and that might change into the future where it might be gone forever. You never really know. You said there's a bunch of these case studies on your website. This has been really interesting. I don't want to beat a dead horse of giving everyone too much information, but they want to get in contact with you or if they want to do a cost seg study or see some other case studies, where can our audience go? Well, you can always call me direct 561-762-0044. M. Donofrio at Engineered Tax services.com that's d-o-n-o-f-r-i-o i always got my office and my mobile that you can you can give me a call or text i'd love to work with you we're property owners and investors ourselves so we eat what we're cooking at every one of our properties we're doing these studies we're maximizing the tax benefits yeah i, I just bought a building uh this year gonna have a big tax bill at the end of this year because it's been a great year there's absolutely no reason why i wouldn't do a cost tech study because if i can get, take my 27 and a half year depreciation and get a lot of that depreciation for next year, you know, lower my tax bill. Why not? It's worth the investment. Mike, can't thank you enough. This has been super interesting. Appreciate your time. Absolutely, Adam. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to this podcast. We're also on all the major podcast platforms. Thanks for watching.